Did you see this? I just have to click this new button in my Notion and all of a sudden I go to my calendar and all my items are here, right? Let's show them again. Here's my film Notion calendar video. I can drag it down here. I can say, well, actually, this takes a bit longer. This takes this long. And the other edit Notion calendar video, that happens here. And if I switch back to my Notion, these times are automatically updated. My Notion tasks live right in my calendar now. Wait, which calendar? This latest Notion update is insane. Notion calendar is finally here. In this video, you learn everything you need to make the most out of this new update. First, how to get started with Notion Calendar. Second, answers to your most important questions. Third, a walkthrough of everything you can do with a new Notion Calendar. And number four, my three favorite workflows that you should start implementing today. Let's get started. Notion Calendar is a new standalone calendar app that has been developed by Notion. It's actually the next development of Cron, another calendar app that Notion bought a few years ago. It's available for both Mac and Windows, and you can also access it through the web. You can find the link to download it in the description, but before you do so, make sure to watch the video till the end so you know everything you need to do. The first time you open Notion Calendar, you will be prompted to sign in with your Google account. As mentioned previously, Notion Calendar only works with uh, Google Calendars and you need to have at least one Google account to sign into it. So it's currently not possible to just use it with a Notion account and only show your Notion database items. You will always need at least an empty Gmail or any other Google account. Once you're signed into Notion Calendar, you'll see immediately, well, all your events. And what I showed you previously, right? You can also connect it to your Notion account. So here you see Matthias Notion. It's very small on screen. I'm sorry for that. But below that it says plus add Notion database. And I can click on here and I can just search for any of my Notion databases. So here I can show the Notion calendar one again, right? So this works the same way as if you click in Notion on this show and calendar button. And now again, it's here and lives in the sidebar and I can hide it and show it just like any other calendar entry. And of course, you can add multiple calendars, right? I could just keep continuing now adding Google calendars or other Notion databases to show here. Here are a few very important things to keep in mind. First, you don't need to use Notion to use Notion Calendar. It's a completely separate standalone app. What does it cost? Notion Calendar is free to use, which makes it a great choice for anyone who's looking for a better calendar experience. Which brings me to the next point. Is it actually good? Heck yeah. To be honest, it's mostly Cron Calendar rebranded, but with a few new features. And those features really make a big difference. Plus, Cron was already an amazing calendar app and had been my daily driver for the past year. Which calendars are supported? Well, so far in order to use Notion Calendar, you need to have at least one Google Calendar. And Google Calendars are also the only ones that you can import. So if you mainly use an Outlook Calendar, on Apple Calendar, then you need to use one of these workarounds where you share these calendars with the Google Calendar and then get them into Notion Calendar. Now to the most important question, does it come with Google Sync? No, not quite. When you add a Notion database to Notion Calendar and get it to display your Notion events next to your calendar events, it's still just that. It displays calendar items and database items on the same view, which is super helpful, but it will never sync them. That means if you just look at your Google Calendar outside of the Notion Calendar interface, you will not see any of your Notion events appear. And if you use any other tools, for example, like a scheduling tool like cal.com or Calendly that you know checks your calendar for availability, it will also unfortunately not recognize the Notion events. Still, just the fact that I now can see my Notion database events next to my calendar in one single view makes it so much easier to coordinate everything that's going on in my life. And with that out of the way, Let's have now a look at all the cool new things that you can do with the brand new Notion calendar. Let's start with a quick UI tool. And apologies if this is a bit small on the screen or sometimes hard to read. Unfortunately, can't further zoom in, but I hope that this still gives you a good first impression of how Notion calendar feels like. So on the left side, you have this little info bar that shows you always the month with the current day highlighted. And then just like in most other calendar apps, you have your calendars uh, all below each other. You can expand them and collapse them, right? I can hide certain ones if I don't want to see them. And I can, of course, also down here under my Notion calendars, see my different Notion calendars and add both new Notion calendars and new Google calendars. In the center then, the usual calendar interface, right? With a typical layout. And then on the right side, a really cool context window that uh, changes depending on what I click on. And we'll talk about that a bit more in a second. Now, the cool thing about Notion Calendar is that it's really designed for power users. So you have a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that you can utilize. 
For example, you can just use the numbers on your keyboard to decide how many days you want to look at, right? So I can look at one day if I press one, two days for two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. I can also just press D to see the current day or W to get the week or N to get the current month. And I can always, whenever I scroll somewhere else, right? So let's say I look to the next week and I want to go back, I can always just press T to jump back to the day right where I'm currently at. And if you want to take keyboard usability one step further, then you can simply press Command K to pull up the command bar and just type whatever action you want to do. And with that, yeah, pretty much use the calendar without ever touching your mouse. Now, my favorite keyboard shortcut, however, is S. And it also has to do with the next feature that I want to talk about. If you press S on your keyboard or here on the side, click on Share Availability, you get a functionality that is basically a mini Calendly. You can pick time slots in your day, send it to another person, and then they can just book a time with you, right? So let me just click here. And now I can start highlighting areas in my calendar. Let's say here I am free and here I'm free. And then I'm also free here for a call. And as you can see, the context window, the pane here on the side, now fills out like with this pre-formula text, right? With 30 minutes during any of these times, all in CET work for you. Now, what I can do is I can either like just copy the snippet and send it to a person, they manually get back to me, or, which I always prefer because it's much easier, I can create a scheduling link. And if I do that and copy that, then they can start booking a time in my calendar. So this is how the experience looks on the other side. You get this like calendar like interface, you can pick a time and then book it directly with uh, just your email. Now, on top of that, it will automatically create a Google Meet for me because that's my uh, conference platform of choice. But you can also cause like connect Notion Calendar with any other one, right? Like Zoom, all the big ones to automatically generate meeting links based on those requirements. Things like your default meeting software can be changed in the settings and together with a bunch of other useful parts. So we can go quickly here and then click on settings. And here we first have under the journal tab, whether we want to generally see weekends in our calendar or whether we want to just completely omit them if we just use it for work, whether we want the week numbers at the very top, right? That can also be or like here on the side that can be useful if you typically work in this business environment and when your week should actually start on. Now, what you can also do, which is of course very, very important, at the bottom is switch the theme, right? Between the light mode, the auto, and what I prefer for cron, the dark mode. But maybe actually like for the rest of this video, let's turn it to light mode because that might actually help you see things a little bit better uh, on a smaller screen. And then here under our integration side, we can set up our different calendars. So here we can integrate different um, different Google calendars. Under conferencing, we can add a bunch of different uh, like meeting providers if we want them and pick our default one. And then under Notion, we can connect different Notion workspaces. Now, very important for the Notion workspaces is that if you have different ones, you need to connect every Notion workspace individually in order to be able to access the databases through uh, Notion calendar, even if all the workspaces were created under the same email account. All right, quickly, one last thing for scheduling snippets. You can also change them afterwards, right? So if I, you see in my calendar, the scheduling snippets block parts of the calendar without really taking up space. So they're not like a full event, but they are marked here. So I see, okay, I've sent someone availability here. And once of course the meeting would be booked, all of them would disappear and we would just have that one meeting in there. So I can click on them, right? And I can then actually drag them for longer. And you see it still updates here on the side where how long the hold is. And I could also actually change the time zone. If I change the time zone here, that also changes the time zone up here in the things. Now, very important when you use these snippets is that they can't fully replace a scheduling app. Because at the end of the day, these are one-time scheduling links. So whenever you send it out to someone and they book one meeting, the whole hold will disappear, right? So it's not like with Calendly or with other like uh, tools that do the same thing, where you can you know create one meeting link for like discovery calls and then just ten people can book one. No, every link is currently only single use. And the second thing, and I really hope they fix that soon because it's quite annoying, is that they actually don't respect other events in your calendar. So. If I were to take this hold and move it uh, longer and move it like over all the other events here, right, in another scheduling tool, I could tell this that it should only book meetings in my available time slots. Not here. These snippets will just offer all the available time slots to someone to book, which again can be quite annoying. So you need to actually pick the free times. Hopefully they will fix that soon. Now, one feature that's absolutely amazing for someone like me who has to work with people and companies across several different time zones is Notion calendars built in well, different time zones. So as you can see here on the side, I have currently three time zones loaded and I have CET, where I currently, or where I usually work in, GMT, just as a default, and then Pacific time, because a lot of my clients also sit in the US. And I can just add 
as many time zones as I want, just by clicking this plus button and then typing whatever I'm looking for, right? So if I also need to work with someone in uh, Japan, I could add Japan standard time. And now I have four of these here on the side and I can always see my current calendar in relation to that. It would make it super, super easy to schedule things. You can also like, of course, once you've added, right, you can like rename the label and you can just right click it to remove the time zone from the list. If you just want to see something for a second, you could also just pull up the command bar, right, and say command K, okay, uh, and call it time travel, so travel to time zone. Let's see actually what's the time currently in uh, Mumbai or in Kolkata. And now I have this like red one here at the very front that shows me, okay, currently it is like 10 p.m. here at the time of filming. And I can just like then, you know, by pressing escape or clicking this X button, uh, remove this again from my screen. Now, personally, I use Notion Calendar and single player mode. But if you have a team and want to use it with several people, it also has some great functionality baked in. For example, you can pin team members, you know, that work in the same uh, company and the same team in your Notion Calendar here in the sidebar and then can easily overlay your calendars on screen. And you can just drag and drop their name into an empty slot to schedule a meeting with them. In these work scenarios, it's also super useful that while Notion Calendar doesn't support syncing events from Notion to Google Calendar yet, it supports some sort of syncing between two different Google Calendars. Now, let's say for example, you have a private calendar and a work calendar. And I just started color coding some things. I'm usually very bad with color coding my calendar, but just for this example, right, we have like two different calendars here. And I could say, well, the film video one, I don't want my boss to know that I spent the whole afternoon not working for him, but filming a video. So what do I do? I can right click this uh, one and then say block on calendar. And here I can say on my main email, please block this. So now if I click on here, what it will ask me is whether I only wanna sync this event to the other calendar or whether I want to do this for all other events. And if I do this for all other events, that means uh, if I say show as busy, it just starts now adding busy blocks in my work calendar whenever I have something in this calendar. Of course, I could include details if I wanted to, but if I do the other one, it just shows it as busy, which is super useful. All right, now let's look at the different event settings. So if I highlight my film video event, you see that my uh, sidebar here now populates all the typical things that you would expect from a calendar app. I can set the time and change it. I can set it to all day, the time zone repeating and so on and so on. I can add participants which will automatically give it also a conferencing link that I can then send out. And one very cool thing about Notion Calendar that Cron also previously supported is that I can connect it with certain Notion docs. So under docs and links, if I have my Notion workspace already connected, I can just click in here and it will show me my last docs and pick, uh, ask me whether I wanna pick something here. So for example, let's say here, I wanna have the Notion Calendar integration um, script that I'm using to film this video and then it's linked here. And if I just click on this uh, event, I have it here. Where this also will pop up is at the beginning of an event. Now at the beginning of an event, you will always get in the top right corner if you have that activated as a notification, like a little badge from Notion Calendar uh, informing you that you know a meeting is starting in a minute, that you can join it with just one click and that you can just look at this. Which is again, super helpful if you also run this with a team, right? Or if you have a meeting with other people and then you can like just add the agenda here and everyone can see it. Added bonus, if you add participants here and these participants don't have access to your uh, Notion page that you have right here, then uh, Notion Calendar will prompt you to ask you, well, what do you wanna share this page with these people? And if you click yes, it will automatically adjust your Notion sharing settings without you having to do anything. Speaking of Notion, let's talk a bit more about the integrations between Notion Calendar and Notion. Because again, remember, these are two standalone apps. Here I currently have Notion open in a very zoomed in way so that you can see things better. And here I have Notion Calendar open. And thanks to this integration, we can now, as you saw in the beginning of the video, see Notion events here, right? So in my, yeah, here, here, Matthias Notion and the Notion Calendar, I can hide and unhide these things. And by default, the database items are shown at the top if they don't have a time, but if they have a time, they show in between my calendar just like any other event. And the really cool thing is right that here in my database, I have these items here, right? So for example, film Notion calendar video, we see it has that time eight to 10, 15, the same as in the calendar. Now, for example, this get Notion calendar sneak peek from yesterday doesn't have a time, it's for the whole day. But if I drag it down from here somewhere in my calendar, it will automatically update to whatever time I give it here, right? So you see here, now it is from 6.45 to 11.15 a.m. And of course, if I move it to a different day, that also reflects in uh, Notion just the same. Now, how do you get there? Well, of course, one way is to simply say here um, command K and then we can say uh, show Notion database and then we can pick uh, any of our Notion database. That, and that is very important, has a calendar view. Currently, the way this works with Notion Calendar is that you don't add individual databases to Notion Calendar, but instead certain views. 
that, and you can add a calendar view or a timeline view. Now, very importantly, this view needs to be created on the root version of the database, right? So on your main database, here's where you need to create that calendar view. So it's not enough if you have, you know, just a table view as the normal uh, database and then like a linked database view somewhere with a calendar. No, it has to be a calendar on the main instance of your database. If all of it is confusing, check out the description below because I have a complete Notion course that will explain you all the differences between linked views, root databases, and so on and so forth. Now, let's assume you have your calendar set up, right? Now, so one way to get it in here is with what I just showed you, right? By just clicking, uh, going on Command K and then saying uh, Notion database and then picking that respective view. Alternatively, in Notion, once you have this set up, you will always get this open in calendar button. So on every database that qualifies for it, you can have this and once you click it, you sort of start syncing that um, database into the calendar. Bonus tip, your view in Notion will carry over exactly in this way to the Notion calendar. So that means you can apply all the filters and rules in Notion that you're used to and then have them reflect on the calendar side. So for example, right, if I say I don't want to see done items, I can just go here, say filter, add advanced filter, where the status is either to do or in progress. All right. And now in my Notion calendar, it will, after a moment, update to reflect that only these items are shown. So back in Notion calendar, you see that the events on Wednesday, Tuesday and Monday disappeared because they are set to done, whereas the other two are still here. And you can now, of course, expand on this. You can create any view that you want in Notion and then import it into your calendar to see it in the exactly right way. Let's assume, for example, we have a bunch of tasks. And with these tasks, we want to make sure that uh, we always see the ones that we've uh, set ourselves for the current day, but not any of the other ones, right? Maybe you have hundreds of tasks and every day we have 10 or so and like we wanna, don't want to clutter up all the other days. Just the ones for today. Those are the ones we want to see. So let's go back into Notion and create a new separate view. So we will duplicate this one, we will call this uh, today. And in this today view, I'm gonna set another filter where I say, okay, here, please make sure that the day uh, is today. And if I do this, nothing changes in my existing uh, Notion calendar view that I have imported here, right? Because here I haven't modified the filter. But if I now click on the button for this other view and import that one into Notion calendar, then I have both versions live. So let's do that. And after a moment or two, you see now in the sidebar, I have now two Notion calendars here. So let's hide the old one, the gray one, and let's show the new one, the purple one. And you can see that, whoops, in a second, yeah, here it is, my film Notion calendar video, only that one shows up. Now, slight drawback, at the moment, in, you can't rename your entries in the sidebar, right? So both of them are named Notion Calendar because that's the name of my database. It doesn't take the name of the view. So again, I hope they fix that in the future that it either takes the name of the view or even better, they let us rename that because until then it might get a bit confusing, but still great feature to get like different types of views from the same database or just different databases into your calendar. Now we know about all the cool things that we can do with this integration. Let's talk about the limitations. First up, as mentioned already, this is not two-way sync. Just because these events now appear here together with my Google Calendar uh, elements doesn't mean that Google Calendar knows they exist. If I would just open Google Calendar, they are not there. They just exist here in this Notion Calendar view. Second, I can only modify the actual um, name property, if I click in here, and the date of the event uh, through Notion Calendar. So even though this has other properties, right? For example, it has a status uh, and I could like add checkboxes, all these sort of things, I can't edit them in the calendar here. I would need to go to Notion to do that. And I can do that with just a click here, right? If I click open in Notion, it will jump into Notion, but I still have to do it. Whereas I wish I could do it right here because I mean, I have so much space here in this context bar. Why not give me all the properties here to edit? On top of that, the Notion events also don't have any of the typical events that you associate with the calendar event, right? So if I click on film video, I can see, well, okay, I can make the change time zone, I can have it recurring, I have participants, a conferencing link, right? I can send out automatically if I do these things here to the participants when they are supposed to show up. None of that is possible with the Notion database entry, right? They have none of that. No participants, no uh, automatic meeting link, and very, very importantly, no recurring feature. You can't make your Notion events recurring just by importing them into Notion Calendar. You still need to do all the event creation and stuff on the Notion side. So in Notion, I can of course go in and as you know, can create a template, right? So for example, I can say a new daily standup meeting and then I can go out of this and I can say, well, okay, this standup meeting, 
I want to repeat. I want to have this every day um, at, let's say, uh, 8 uh, a.m. And I save it. And now every day at 8 a.m. it will create this new daily standup meeting for me in the calendar. And then it will also show up in Notion calendar. But there's no way to have that automatically populated, you know, at infinity as with the other events. Whereas here in Notion, right, if I say, okay, film this video, please, um, let's say repeat. Let's uh, repeat this uh, every day. You see it immediately is here. So that is also still a limitation with what's currently possible. Still, even with these limitations, I'm super, super, super excited for this update because it means that for the first time ever, I have this one unified view where I have my calendar and my Notion items in the same place without having to use any third-party automations. Plus, this is only the first release, right? There will be many, many more updates to bring Notion items closer to the calendar feature and hopefully at some point integrate all these things without the current separation. A great, great step in the right direction. Last but certainly not least, as promised, my three favorite workflows for the new Notion calendar. First, using Notion calendar to time block. If all that Notion calendar could do was this, I would still be super, super excited for this release. Because let's be honest, assigning times to tasks in Notion is not fun. I have to click so many times, right? I need to go into the date property. I need to toggle on include time. And then I need to go up here to actually type the time. No one has time for that. And on my calendar views in Notion, I don't even see them, right? I mean, I can turn this instead of uh, like this type of view. I could say, well, please show this to me as um, as a week, right? But even on my week with the different days, I don't have times in here. So like, it's, it's just too hard. But with Notion calendar, now that I've synced it over, I just see them all appear up here. So now I can simply drag them into the respective uh, slots of the day, time block my day, and at the same time assign times to the different entries. So let's say I need to get really excited for this new Notion release. Well, let's start by that early in the morning and let's give it this much time. And actually, like, let's do it a bit later. Then I have one more time block before my next call. So let's actually also read some books. So again, just dragging it in here and we have a slight visual bug going on there, but that should hopefully be resolved soon as well. Now read some books. And then I can just continue with them, right? So film Notion video and so on and so on. So with just a few clicks instead of the many ones before, I've scheduled my different time blocks. And if I go back to Notion, I actually have these times assigned. So if I need them for something, right? I can now run formulas of that, do other automations with that. Again, just so much easier than before. Second, using schedule snippets to arrange your next meeting. I already talked about this previously in the video, but I just wanted to mention it again because it's so, so powerful. You need to arrange meetings a lot. And all this back and forth with emails, are you free here, are you free then? Well, no one needs that. Now, setting up a dedicated scheduling tool like Calendly or so is a great idea if you have to arrange a ton of calls. And I have one myself. But even then, sometimes the rules that you've set up there are too rigid for the call that you actually want to now arrange with a specific person. And for that, these one-off snippets are absolutely amazing. Actually, that's the feature that made me fall in love with Cron, the predecessor from Notion in the first place. So again, just click S or click on share availability, pick whatever it is that you're free, send it to the person and see how amazed they are. I get so many questions all the time how I arrange my meetings when I send them these links. And I always tell them, well, get this app, get this tool, it's worth it. And now it just got a lot better. And number three, exploring the widgets that Notion Calendar has both for your phone and for the Mac. Now there's only one thing left for you to do. Download Notion Calendar with the link in the description and give it a try yourself. And while doing so, you realize that you should maybe also brush up on your regular Notion skills. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Here are 99 tips on how to use Notion the best way in 2024. Just click here and I will see you in a second.